VPC Peer Keep Alive Link. In this video, I am going to talk about VPC Peer Keep Alive Link and some detail about this special link, some uh, usage of, uh, for example, this link, and also some values about this link. For example, interval of the keep alive, keep alive whole time or keep alive timeout. Let me to start with the, uh, for example, this scenario. In this scenario, we have a VPC domain between NXOS1 and NXOS2. This is the v, uh, VPC domain one. Let me to show you, we configured this scenario before show vpc in switch one can show us that we have one vpc domain and as you can see vpc keep alive status now is okay and the peer is alive okay also we have port channel two with the switch three and in nxos2 okay this is the nxos2 show vpc can show us that we have the vpc domain one and the vpc keep alive status is alive okay let me to start talking about uh, the peer keep alive link you know that in uh, for example configuration of vpc we have two important link okay the first is vpc peer link and the second is the vpc peer keep alive link in this video i am going to talk about this link not vpc peer link okay the uh, vpc peer keep alive link okay is a layer three link the, the first things that we should consider as we saw in the configuration is that this is the layer this is a layer three link this means that for example you should configure ip address on one side and then uh, other ip address in that range in the other side okay and also that joins one vpc peer device for example switch one to the other vpc peer device you know that we configured the vpc peer keep alive link with this configuration let me to show you in nxos1 uh, for example show running config vpc look at here under the vpc domain one and this in this context i configured peer keep alive with the destination of 10122 this is the ip address of the switch 2 and uh, this with the source of 10121 the ip address of interface of switch 1 in a specific vrf for example okay show run interface eth13 in this scenario we use the interface eth13 as the uh, member of vrf vpc ka and with the ip address of 10121 and then uh, we configured eth13 of switch 2 with the 10122 let me to write here now we have eth because we will show all of this we will see all of this on the show commands with the ip of, uh, as of 10121 slash uh, 24 for example and also we have eth13 of switch 2 with the ip address of 10122 don't forget that these two interface are members of the specific vrf for example vrf vpc uh, ka uh, on this scenario okay. the vpc peer keep alive link carries periodic heartbeat between vpc peer device uh, between the switch one and also switch two i will show you it is used at the boot of the vpc system to guarantee both peer device are up before forming vpc domain okay and also when vpc peer link fails to down state this is the heartbeat between the vpc peers okay i will show you in term of the data structure of this heartbeat a vpc peer keep alive message is a udp message on port 3200 okay i will show you keep alive message can be captured let me to show you look at here in this scenario uh, for example this is our scenario i'm going to capture eth13 this is the capture of eth13 and this is the vpc P uh, keep alive message look at here we have a, a data udp ip and as you can see this is the unicast this is the unicast packet and also the source port and destination port are equal to the 3200 every keep alive message in uh, should send in, uh, in in the one second interval first uh, as, as you can see 10121 the switch one sends one keep alive to 10122 and 10122 again should send a, another keep alive to 10121 the switch one okay this is the uh, data structure of the keep alive the data structure is not important for us but we should know that both of vpc peer device should send the vpc 
uh, keep here, keep alive message. Okay, this is the first function, heart beating between VPC peer device. But also, the VPC peer keep alive link, this link, okay, has another function. Uh, for understanding the another function, first we should understand a scenario, a bad scenario, we call it a split brain let me to talk about first a split brain what is the split brain let me to talk it look at here both vpc peers in some scenarios are active active why you know that in the uh, for example vpc one of the switches is the primary or active and one of the switches okay is the secondary switch or a standby switch okay in some scenarios, both of these uh, both of these switches uh, I should change to active status. Why? Let me talk it. Talk about it. When VPC peer link, not peer keep alive. When this link, VPC peer link, is down, there is no more real time synchronization. Okay, between the two peer devices. So VPC system must react to this active active situation. Now we have two active because with uh, the VPC peer link doesn't work and we have two active switch. This is done by shutting down VPC members on a secondary peer device. Look at here. When we detect that VPC peer link goes to down state, for a switch to a standby switch should, uh, for example, uh, remove or should shut down its VPC member ports. It's one of the function of the VPC peer keep alive. Okay. In, in, the, in this case, VPC peer keep alive link is leveraged to detect a split brain uh, scenario. Okay, because of that, we are using the VPC peer keep alive link to sending peer keep alive message. And the function of peer keep alive message is two things. First, is heart beating between switch one and switch two, and the second, the function of uh, the, this message on this link is preventing the split brain scenario means when VPC peer link goes to down state switch one and switch two uh, be, uh, do, uh, does they can't synchronize between each other because of that the uh, members of the switch two should go to the down state to preventing some uh, bad scenarios and this is the function of the uh, peer keep alive message on the peer keep alive link the next thing that uh, we should understand we should know about the uh, peer keep alive message is the timers okay in about the peer keep alive message we have three timer first let me to uh, show you these timers here we have a timer we call it keep alive interval and the uh, for example interval of every keep alive is one second i showed you but let me to show you again in the capture look at here for example at a time at the time between the this uh, keep alive 10 1 2 1 2 10 1 2 2 and the next keep alive this is the next uh, keep alive as you can see we have one second interval every keep alive should send in the one second interval to the other device this is the default value we can change it also we have two other timers in the uh, peer keep alive look at here the first is keep alive whole time out keep alive whole timeout and this and the third is the, uh, the the second is keep alive whole timeout and the third is keep alive timeout not whole timeout look at here keep alive whole timeout keep alive timeout what is the keep alive whole timeout what is the keep alive timeout i will talk about that but first you should know that keep alive whole time has three second value by default and keep alive timeout has five second value by default let me to talk about the uh, vpc uh, keep alive timeout okay and also vpc uh, keep alive whole time timeout and vpc and vpc keep alive timeout this is so easy first the keep alive whole timeout Keep alive whole timeout uh, should use uh, when the, for example, VPC peer link goes to down state. This timer gets started once the peer VPC peer link goes to down state. Assume that this link, okay, VPC peer link goes to down state. 
okay as i mentioned before one of the function of the vpc peer keep alive keep alive link is for detecting split brain scenarios and now we have a split brain scenario vpc peer link go 